Well, guys, it's very, very early here, and I've got to go to work in a few hours, so I'm trying to do this on my phone, guys. Hold on. Y'all know this is not a perfect production. Hold on. I want to read this to you. So, guys, uh, for a lot of viewers, uh, especially a lot of people that used to work with Megan McCain at The View, uh, this is a glorious day. We have now learned, uh, according to the Daily Mail, there is an exclusive report from the Daily Mail, I should say, that as of today, July 1st, 2021, Thursday, Meghan McCain will announce her resignation on the show today. Now, let me read a little bit of this article. Now, because I know that we're going to be getting so many leaks, y'all, over the next, <laughs> all throughout the day, <laughs> the next week or two, I'm going to title this Meghan McCain Resignation Part 1. That way I can just make it a playlist for the people who are going to be coming just for this. So let me read a little bit of this article. Okay, so the title says exclusive. Megan McCain will announce her resignation from The View on today's show after four years with two years left on her contract. So let me scroll down here, y'all. It says the 36-year-old is leaving the daytime talk show after four seasons and with two years remaining on her contract. Quote, Megan will announce her resignation on Thursday's show, a Disney source told DailyMail.com. The source added that her co-host, Whoopi, Joy, Sarah, Sonny, and Anna, are not yet aware that Megan has resigned. We have tried to keep her, but she is adamant that now is the right time for her to leave, the source said. She will finish at the end of July 2021. All right. So um, the rest of the article just talks about her history. Like she came to the show in 2017. She's John McKay's daughter. She's married to Ben Dominic. We are on all that stuff. So I won't waste your time reading that to you. But what I will do for those of you who are outside the U.S., shout out to all my international listeners, by the way, I will uh, put the link to this article on our community wall on YouTube. And um, if you don't know how to find the community wall, just Google it on YouTube, you know, and they'll tell you how to get there. Okay. Um, now, let me tell you what I think about this. Now, my thoughts right now are preliminary <laughs> because I'm basing my, my, my commentary on what's available publicly now. So as more information leaks out, my thoughts like yours are probably going to shift and change. So for all my loyal listeners, just keep that in mind. Let me tell you what I really think happened here. And of course, I don't know, but this is what I think happened because of something Megan said a few weeks ago. Because I remember I was in my bedroom folding the clothes and I was thinking, hmm, that's very interesting. For me, as someone who used to be an investigative interviewer, when people say little things, those little things have a whole lot behind them. A whole lot behind them. And I just remember stopping as I was putting the clothes up thinking, hmm, that's very interesting that she would say that. Something has happened. And I knew then something was going on, but I thought, let me just wait and see if she'll say something else. And she never did. So this kind of now is all clicking in my brain together. So... What I really think happened here is this. Before Kim got there, James Goldston was there and he was there for years. And like most jobs, sometimes you can have a boss that you've had for years and that boss runs the, runs the show loosey-goosey. We've all had that experience where you have an employer or a manager or a supervisor who they are really loose with y'all in the department. You can, as long as you get your work done, however you get it done and what time you come back lunch, they don't care as long as you produce. But whatever goes on, they don't care. James allegedly was like that. But we've all had the experience when that boss leaves and then a new boss comes in or a new supervisor, new manager, who's more strict than the other person. They actually expect for you to come back from lunch in an hour or your 30 minutes. They are actually checking to make sure that you turn in your reports on time. They're not giving you all these extensions like the other boss did. Can we relate to this, y'all? We all can. I really think that's what happened. James got out of there. Kim came. Kim is different. Kim expects for you to follow policy. And Megan decided she did not want to adapt to her new boss, her new boss's way of managing the show running this show. And so she quit. I do not believe she was fired. I don't believe she was even given the option of you can either resign or we can let you go. I don't think any of that happened. I really think she had a common experience that all of us have had. And she just didn't want to adjust. Let me tell you why I'm, I'm saying I think this is what happened. Let me tell you the, what happened the other day when I was folding the clothes. This was a couple of weeks ago or maybe it was a week ago. I can't remember. But I was here by myself. 
and uh, I was watching the show and they were talking about Donald Trump's pants. Y'all remember that conversation when he came out with, I mean, like what was going on with his pants, like for real. Okay. And they were talking about that and Joy made, I can't remember now exactly what Joy said, but Joy made a very, you know, comical comment and uh, Megan tried to correct Joy and she said, I thought we were not supposed to say that. And Joy said, what? And Megan said, yeah, remember, you know, something like, remember we the standards, we weren't supposed to say that. Megan mentioned something about the, the standards. And Joy said, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't have that conversation about standards. I, I remember thinking, that woman has talked to Megan. And, you know, for those of us who, I used to work in human resources. Shout out to all my people who still work in human resources before I did investigative interviews. I was in my 20s. And I can remember how we handled things. When there was a problem employee and they were like always in some mess, you don't want to let them go because they are maybe producing what you need. So you go to them and you talk to them and you say, I'm, the conversation I'm having with you, we're having with everybody. And you, you're really not having that conversation with everybody. You're having it with them. But you don't want them to feel singled out. You don't want them to feel like you're attacking them. So you present the information in that kind of way. I got that same feeling when I heard her say that. Because Joy was like, I didn't have that conversation. And I thought, oh, they probably did to her what most human resource people do. Um, because Megan always feels singled out you know, for some reason, you know, we know that in my opinion on the show, Megan has a victim mentality, but anyway, so I really felt like that lady talked to her and said, these are the standards. See, I ain't James (laughs) is a new sheriff in town. These are the standards. And I'm expecting all my employees to follow these standards and see, you can either say, okay, or you can say I'm out of here. And I think that she didn't want to do that. She didn't want to follow the standards. Just like most of us who've had this experience, like I was saying earlier, the old boss who was loosey goosey. Now we got a new boss and that he or she is more strict. They expect for us to come back on time. They expect for us to turn stuff in on time. They ain't playing no games with us. They don't let us, you know, I need to go leave early from work to go pick up my kid. The new boss ain't on all that stuff. Most people can stay and adjust, but there are some people in the department, right? Y'all, we've all had this experience or maybe we've been the person. We just didn't want to adjust. So we just left and went and got another job. I'm telling you, I really think this will happen here. Most people are going to want to exploit this and say, oh, she almost got fired. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. She didn't want to adjust. So she's got out. Well, that's good for them and good for us too. It's good for everybody. Now, let me wrap this up, guys. I got to run some errands before I uh, get out of here and go to work. You want to know what else is going to happen? And this is, this is, this is good, but it's sad. The people who have um, borne the brunt of her offenses for years, this is a day of vindication for them. Because as we've talked about over the many years, it's not just the things that we've seen Megan do on air. Megan has done a lot of stuff, y'all, behind the scenes that have hurt people's feelings. She has complained from what I always heard about some of the smallest things, the the most minute things. This girl is complaining about it. If you don't do this, you don't, she, you know, she came and she thought she was running the show. And so she made people's lives really miserable because, you know, even if you don't get, you know, written up, you know, or, or, or chastised, if one of the on air talent complains, let's say you were assigned to clean Megan's dressing room and maybe you didn't clean it the way she wanted to. This girl would go complain on you. Allegedly. Now I ain't saying that's what happened. I'm just giving you an example. Hint, hint, hint. Okay. And she would go complain on you. Okay. That complaint goes in your file. (laughs) So you can imagine that people have had a lot of resentment towards Megan. Well, guess what? Now that she's quitting, they are free, honey, to go to the media and tell all their stories. And a lot of these places, you don't have to give your name. You can do it anonymously. And guess what? They will pay you for it too. So this is double, you know, validation day for a lot of those people. So I can promise y'all, we think we've heard leaks on Megan. Oh, we're going to get the real deal now. We're going to get the real deal about this girl. And we're probably, probably, excuse me, going to hear things that are going to shock us because they're going to be so minuscule. And it's like, you acted a fool over that. <laughs> you, you, you complained over that. We're going to get those types of reports. I promise you all these people who have kept their mouth closed for years. 
Now that she's out the door, see, she can't do nothing to him. And she can't say it's slander because if you really said that to those people and offended them or complained on them, they have proof of that, you know? So you can't say they're slandering you and you can't tell them to shut their mouth like you did when you were working there. And the the boss can't come to them and say, don't tell anybody because she's going to threaten to quit. Now, none of that stuff matters. All of the brakes are off, okay? The parking brakes lifted. Now these people are free to go tell their stories. So guys, I'm telling you, we're about to really learn some things about how nasty this young lady was behind the scenes and how she, like I said, really made a lot of people's lives miserable there. And you know what? It is what it is. Now, as I end the podcast, I will say, I don't know how Megan's going to do it on the show because right now where I'm, where I live, the show doesn't come on until 10, 10 o'clock. I know it comes on 11 for some of you guys, eight for some of you. Um, I don't know what she's going to say. Uh, golly knows what she's going to say. I hope she doesn't drag it out and make it really long. Just girl, I'm quitting or, you know, I don't know y'all I'm going to spend time with my baby, whatever, and be done with it. I want to also leave y'all with this. Another angle to her quitting <clears throat> is also the fact that her mom recently accepted the position, uh, in Joe Biden's administration. And I, I don't know, but I, I just seem to think that, Part of this decision also was not just her wanting, not wanting to adjust to the new boss and the new boss's being, boss being a little bit more, you know, meaning we're going to follow policy than the other boss. I think also it was a family decision because, you know, now your mom is in this administration. She just told Andy Cohen a few weeks ago, she cringes when she watches you on the show acting a fool. She wasn't in his administration at that point. Now she is. It just doesn't look good for your mom who's going to be making all these international trips, you know, and all this stuff about hunger when your daughter is on on an international show acting a fool day in and day out, arguing with people, going back and forth like we're in high school with people and those reports are out there. It just doesn't look good for her. So I really feel like that there were a multitude of reasons that this girl quit. Another thing is her mental health. I think Megan's mental health has really suffered. I wouldn't be surprised if we learned that she was possibly trying to avoid a mental breakdown. You say, oh God, that is such a strong statement. It sure is. And I mean it. (laughs) I mean it. I mean exactly what I just said. Um, I don't think people understand the stress that comes with all a public job like this. I really don't think they understand the stress. That's why Sonny had diverticulitis a couple of years ago. Cause she said it was the stress of this job and the stress of just dealing with everything that comes with the job. And guess what? Sonny don't do stuff to make her life hard and make people dislike her, but this girl does. So you take what Sonny was dealing with and you just multiply it with this girl because she was the source of her own pain in so many ways. So guys, I got to get out of here and run these errands. I got to go return some clothes to Ross Um, Now that church is back open fully, uh, we're going back to church now instead of doing virtual. And I need to get some uh, new dresses and stuff like that. And I need to return these um, dresses and whatnot and also pick up some new mask and stuff. So uh, to all of you guys who are, uh, you know, getting back into the world, please be careful. Don't forget about this Delta variant. Um, Just be careful. Don't don't get loosey goosey with your life. It's not worth it. Don't get loosey goosey with your kids lives. Those of you have children, let's continue to be as safe as possible um, until all of us feel that things are where they need to be. Okay. All right, guys, I will talk to y'all later. And don't forget, this is just part one. I'll be back whenever, you know, there's more information available. Okay. I'll talk to you later.